Chaos Ball is alive and well, folks, and a big time comeback win against the Astros means it's time for an emergency episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors! It is Saturday, May 6, 2023. This is Todd Gonzalez and Colby Padnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast, brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MLB today to get 10% off your first month. Thank you so much for making us your first listen after the game. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon by scanning the QR code right above my head. The link as well as our social accounts is also in the description of this episode in this episode i didn't think we were going to be doing about mm, not even an hour ago but here we are it's almost one in the morning here local time for me uh our lighting is bad but who cares the mariners just got a big win and we want to talk about it with you guys <sighs> wow uh what just happened <laughs> I, I think that's the first question to ask. Uh, the second question to ask, of course, naturally, is how does this affect LeBron's legacy? Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> the Mariners were staring down a series loss of the Astros, 15 and 18, with four outs to go by the time that they, I mean, they get to the bottom of the eighth. They record two quick outs. It seems like it's it's over, man. They didn't have as much of a whimper of offense tonight. Really, they got one legitimate, like real legitimate threat going against JP France in the first inning, bases loaded, one out. And of course, if you've been watching this team for the last six-ish weeks, you can fill in the rest. But you give the Mariners bases loaded, one out, they do nothing with it. You give them bases empty, two outs, and you... I mean that that's the secret Piece recipe, I guess. Piece of cake. Yeah, obviously. Let's let's go through this. So we get to the bottom of the eighth. Like I mentioned, two quick outs. Ty France grounds out. Jared Kelnick strikes out against Rafael Montero, former Mariners reliever. And then a Eugenio Suarez walks. All right. Eh, probably gonna be a ground out or something like that coming up next. But no, Cal Raleigh infield single. Huh. The Babip gods might be smiling upon the Seattle Mariners. Could it be? No. But alas, Teoscar Hernandez reaches on an infield single. And we're cooking with gas, baby. J.P. Crawford steps in the batter's box. And what does J.P. Crawford do? We get a 3-1 count, just like J.P. Crawford always does. And then, of course, the P stands for power. And for the second night in a row, the Mariners get a game-tying, bases-clearing double and it's suddenly three to three now we'll talk about colton wong who had the other game time basis clearing double a little bit later on um he unfortunately was not able to finish this game but that did however open the door for one jose caballero who just seems to do something every time he gets in a game for his biggest moment in a mariner's uniform a two-run RBI double to take the lead, to complete the comeback, and then the Mariners get some much-needed insurance from Julio Rodriguez, who was having yet another rough night before his final at-bat of this game, and hopefully that gets the monkey off his back. And then Jared Kelnick with an RBI single as well to make things 7-3, to three. and the Mariners needed that because it got kind of interesting in the top of the ninth for Paul Seawald. But he was able to close the door, and the Mariners win 7-5. to five. Colby, I've been talking for almost five minutes of this episode. I, I apologize, my friend, but I'm very, very excited about this win, and I know you are as well. How are you feeling right now? feels good. It feels good to take on a fan base that has just a massive inferiority complex 
who constantly acts like victims because they got caught cheating and oh that's not fair we got caught we didn't do anything wrong we just got caught that's not fair everybody else does it you got caught you didn't apologize for it and nothing bad happened to you and somehow you still need this like you have still have this superiority complex like your god's gift to baseball well guess what you lost you blew it you're up three to nothing you needed four outs you had everybody in your bullpen available and you couldn't get it done against the bottom of the mariners lineup the bottom of this offense you could not get it done congratulations you blew it you suck you're losers because you know what you have a problem right now in houston and that problem is the seattle mariners this team is younger than you they are better than you they are faster than you they have better pitching they have more power they're better than you and for the last year the last calendar year they have been nipping at your heels the entire year and you're scared and you're nervous and you're worried that the free ride is about to be over. And let me save you some time down in the comments. Cause I know you're watching this because there's one thing I know about Astro fans is that they're so not worried about the Mariners that they watch our show on nights like tonight to leave comments down below. Please do appreciate it. Helps the algorithm very much. Bottom line is your time's done. You're over your yesterday's news. The Seattle Mariners are coming for you. They're right there with you every step of the way. And by the way, now you have to deal with Texas. Now you have to deal with the Angels. Nobody's afraid of you anymore, Houston. You're a shell of your former self. Congratulations on winning the World Series last year because it's the last one you're ever going to win. You're done. You're toast. Your octogenarian manager is a bum. He's a loser. He cosplays as a baseball player. Look at me. I wear batting gloves in the dugout. Grow up, old man. The they're love, not even batting gloves. They're like surgical gloves. The love that the Major League Baseball has given Dusty Baker makes me sick. He sucks. He's a bad manager. You know what? And he managed a bad bullpen tonight. Sorry. Sucks to suck. You couldn't get out JP Crawford and Jose Caballero. Those guys beat you. That's a bummer. Hey, by the way, complain more about that strike to Taylor Trammell. That was called a ball. Boy, when has that ever happened against the Mariners? I don't know. Try last night. You're pathetic. You're want to be, you want to be tough guys. You're a loser. I'll say it right now. Astros fans in the comments right now. You're losers. You know, how I know that. I just checked the scoreboard. You lost. You're up three to nothing. You had four outs to get. How many did you get? You got one. After you gave up seven to the Mariners. Steam hasn't hit in two weeks. And you had your two best setup guys out there. You couldn't get one out. Not one. Against J.P. Crawford and Jose Caballero. Yeah, I'm shaking in my boots about the Houston Astros that night. Oh, Lord. How can we overtake the mighty Houston Astros by just playing as well as we can? Seattle Mariners are a better team than the Houston Astros. You could put that down right now. All they have to do is play like it. Talent-wise, the Mariners have more talent. I'll say it. They're deeper. They're better run, both at the front office and the managerial level. Your time's over. You're done. Congratulations on the two World Series. You're going to need to hold on to those forever because, like I said, you're not winning another one for a long time. So... It's cameras for you. Lights, curtain, lights, camera, action. Dude, you couldn't get Ty France out tonight. Ty France is hitting like 070 in the last three weeks. Couldn't get that dude out. But hey, mm. you know what? Congratulations. You have Jeremy Pena and his 280 on base percentage. Woo. That's mm. the star you guys throw up against Julio. Okay, cool. Cool. Enjoy the comment section tonight, guys. It's going to be fun. And just know, just know that you guys just typing away in the comments. Look at this idiot. Look at this fake tough guy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because you know what? Right here, that's rent free. Cost me mm. nothing for the show to live in your guys' head. Absolutely nothing. Cost absolutely nothing for the Mariners to just scare the living you know what out of you. So much so that your pathetic little social media intern think see us rise or whatever is a funny thing to tweet or see you later is a funny thing to tweet. You know what? You blew it. You blew it. You blew it. You blew it. There you go. And we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to take the season. We're going to take the series win tomorrow. I don't know what to tell you. It's over. Your free ride is over. Nobody fears you anymore. You're just like Mm. everybody else. You're mortal. You're not that good of a ball club. I don't care what happens when Chaz McCormick comes back. I don't care what happens when Michael Brantley comes back. You're done. Congratulations. You blew it. You blew it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we don't think about you at all anyway. A lot uh, less than they think about us. That's for sure. Col- Colby after dark. Bringing the heat. All right. 
Just like imagine it. if I was uncensored. Hmm. That's why you scan the QR code that's right <laughs> above my head, baby. That's why you do that. All right. Uh, well, so we need to transition here, but I, I do want to talk more about just uh, you know how close these two teams are and how you know hopefully this is an indication of of a shift uh, that I think has been you know it's a, it's a long time coming. Uh, but real quick before we get into that, a reminder: this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app. That finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you, and for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorize your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Colby, you need me to say it one more time? I think so, yeah. Rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Oh, okay, got it. You got to know. All right, mm-hmm. cool. That's not, not spaceship cash. Rocketmoney.com. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners post game show. Thank you so much for making us your first listen after the Mariners come from behind seven to five win over the Houston Astros tonight. Colby having some choice words for the Houston Astros organization and their fan base. What's the worst that's going to happen? Certainly Ty? making a, They're going to yell at me online. Oh, no. Heaven well, forbid. I was I was about to say I was about to say they are probably making up about seventy percent of the comments right now below our face. Gee, it's almost like depending on when you're listening to this, watching this, it's almost like somebody set that up. Mm. A trap may have been laid. Money maker Colby Patton. So, <laughs> uh, to me, this game and in this series in general has been reflective of just what where this matchup is now between these two teams and that it feels like the mariners are just so close it was like this in the alds where it felt like they really outplayed them for a majority of that series but when it mattered when one of these teams needed the big moment it always fell in the direction of houston they would always come through with the big hit the big home run big call would go their way etc like last night right and tonight that shifted the mariners were the one that had the big moment that were able to take advantage of the last opportunity that was there to steal this game and the astros have done that time and time and time again against the mariners especially as of late where they've been able to steal games like this and, you know, the Mariners have had a couple of those moments against this team, like the Dylan Moore game, et cetera. But this is a this is a win that the Mariners desperately needed just in terms of morale, just in terms of like, hey, you do belong. You do, you know, you are capable of going toe to toe with this team and and taking them on and, and being able to overcome this juggernaut of a, a what's been a juggernaut of a franchise. And. Yeah, you know, obviously both of these teams are not really in the place that they want to be at right now. If the Mariners win tomorrow, both of these teams are squarely at 500. They're both at 17 and 17. And, you know, it's early, but that's certainly not where the Mariners want to be, nor the Astros. Injuries aside, all that. Whatever, yeah. But these are the two teams that I still believe are going to be there at the end of the day in the AOS. And... You know, right now you're just kind of feeling each other out. You're sizing one another up. But I think it's in terms of just like, because again, you're staring 15 and 18 down the barrel with four outs to go in this game. And it just seems like all hope is lost that you're going to lose the series. That it just, and you weren't really competitive at all tonight, at least on the offensive end. Shout out to the bullpen. Shout out to, to Marco Gonzalez for keeping it at three runs, et cetera. But 
from an offensive standpoint, you just didn't look competitive at all. And this was on a night where they had a guy, a 28 year old making his major league debut and he doesn't have overwhelming stuff and you just couldn't do anything against him. And you, I'm stuff for the Mariners offense, but <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. It was it's pretty it good was, stuff. Awful command. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, like they we mentioned yesterday that they just, like we mentioned yesterday, he is a high strikeout, high walk guy. That's what he's been in the minor leagues. Um, yeah. So, you know, it just it just felt like this was going to not necessarily kill you, but it was going to hurt. This was going to sting if you were if you lost this one. And, and if you did it in, you know, if you got your ass kicked and it was just three nothing or whatever it was. Right. So to make this comeback huge. And again, this is another comeback win for the Mariners and what the last six seven days right i think they've had three or four in the last six games yeah yeah chaos ball is back that's what it seems like to me i mean it seems like it is back and alive and well and uh that's a good thing right because i mean obviously you can't live on that i mean the mariners have lived on that for the last two years but in theory you you can't live on that we keep on saying that but yeah, here we are here we are and it just it, it feels like we're starting to see this team really turn the corner in terms of the vibes the overall vibes around the team it just feels more like it has the last couple of years because mm -hmm. frankly over the last few weeks it just it, it felt like something was missing from this team like the magic just wasn't there and tonight and like in toronto last week it it feels like that magic is coming back a little bit yeah um certainly the team is is playing a little bit better um, it's easy to write off wins against Oakland saying they don't matter. They're not a real team, blah, blah, blah. Texas has played Oakland a ton. Houston's played Oakland. Los Angeles has played Oakland. Everybody's playing Oakland, right? So that doesn't really matter. As long as you win those games, it doesn't matter how you do it or in which way you do it. You just win, just beat, beat the bad teams. And the Mariners did that down in Oakland. They had a huge comeback win on Sunday. A couple of their wins, uh, were comeback variety in, uh, in Oakland, which again, not ideal, but who cares? They're wins. That's all that matters. And now they get the big one today. They almost set up another come from behind victory yesterday, which we'll never know if it would have gone their way if the umpire made the call correct um, in, in the top of the ninth. You still had two more outs to get. You know, certainly wasn't a, a for sure thing that the Mariners had victory stolen from them last night, but they they had a couple opportunities even after that to to go out there and win that game, and they kind of blew it. So. Uh, yeah, the nice thing about winning tonight's game, in all seriousness, is that it sets you up for tomorrow. Tomorrow's a winnable game. Of course it is. But if you lose, if Miller doesn't have it, if Brash blows it, or you just don't hit or whatever, this isn't a disastrous result, right? You've fallen one game back from where you were when you started the series. Your offense is starting to show signs of life. You look at the last few games, and sure, they're, show they're scoring a lot in one run. They're scoring a lot of their runs in, in one breakout inning every game. Who cares as long as they score them, right? It doesn't right, matter if they right. score six in the 10th, as long as they score, get to the 10th and score six. So when you kind of start looking at the run total since the Sunday game in Toronto, 10, four, five, seven, you're seeing a lot of, you know, four, five or more uh, run games. And, and the Mariners are still going to win a high majority of those. So, you know, you have a shot tomorrow to go out, take a series. Again, it doesn't like exalt you from your playoff sweep last year. Not, not even close. Right. Uh, but no, 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 no. But no, in terms of no. setting a tone, getting back to 500, you have the Rangers coming into town after that, uh, who are currently, I believe still in first place uh, after tonight, who cares? Uh, but you're going to get to see the new look Texas Rangers for, for three at your home before you go out on the road and, and you have a, a, a schedule that's starting to break a little bit easier for you. The Mariners have faced some tough pitching staffs staffs early um, and their schedule overall strength has been, it's been a little bit difficult. So it's starting to swing the other way, but thankfully the team is starting to play better anyways. And when you look at guys like Ty France, who's I think had on a four game hitting streak now, three game hitting streak now, and today he had three hits. None of them particularly hard hit, but whatever, you'll take it. It doesn't matter. Colton Wong was starting to turn things around, unfortunately. You know, he had to leave today's game, uh, but he has start, he's made mechanical changes yet again, and they seem to be paying off over the last seven to 10 days. Tay Oscar is hitting the ball harder right now. Still some bad at bats, still some, you know, dumb uh, base running decisions from Tao, but. Uh, he's starting to hit the ball a little bit better. Julio, again, the big hit tonight. And then he also had a 115 mile an hour line drive that was caught 
hit right at a guy. Jared Kelnick was robbed of another hit tonight by Bregman. Um, it just kind of looks like the offense is slowly but surely starting to pull themselves out of that funk, and we'll see. You know, momentum is only as good as the next day's starting pitcher, so we'll see what Bryce Miller has tomorrow. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's a little bit easier to turn around and play. You know, in in twelve hours, fourteen hours, or whatever, when you're coming off of a big win like this, and if you're coming off with a loss. So, in that in that you know in that instance, in this instance, it is a big win, even though it is just mm-hmm. May sixth. Yeah, to me also, if you end up losing the you know two out of three in this series, I would much rather that you had won this game than lose this game and then win tomorrow. I just feel like from a vibes perspective, it feels like considering the way that this game flowed, that you just you needed this. And obviously hindsight is 2020 because now you know we have the privilege of knowing what it feels like to to come back and win this game, but it just it feels like this is a really important moment in this season. Uh, it feels like it's it's a pivotal uh, turn uh, for this team in terms of just yeah. the overall morale kind of around the club right now. Yeah, so. you got to start turning it around in the month of May. You don't have to be you yeah. know insane. You don't have to be nineteen and six in the month of May, but you have to start turning this thing around. You can't go into June, you know, in the same or a similar spot to where you were last June, you're just not going to have that kind of turnaround every single year. So May is a very important month. So every win you can stack in the month of May is going to help the morale. It's going to help this team uh, just kind of, you know, stack wins. And that's all you're looking for right now. You want to stack wins. You want to avoid the, the huge disastrous six game losing streak that just will make you feel like you're just clawing your way up from that the entire year. So May is a big month for the Mariners. Every game in May matters. Um, not as much as you know as they do in September or July even, but you want to have right. a good month after you kind of had a disappointing April. Right. All right. For uh for any folks watching on YouTube right now, if you see me fidgeting around, it's because I got quickly set up and I have trapped myself <laughs> under cords. So my mic moves. cord is yeah, my mic cord is like strapping me in right now. Yeah. So I was trying to see if I could adjust out of it. Nope, nope. So we're gonna just uh, try to vibe out here for the next eight minutes, and hopefully the stream <laughs> throw, or the uh, recording does not die. Throw to segment three, if you're quick. Wa- if you're if you're watching this, it means it didn't happen. So hey, all right. I want to talk about one ten. I want to talk about Colton Wong. Unfortunately, that sucks. Uh, in just a moment, but real quick, a reminder: this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Therapy can be helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It can empower you to be the best version of yourself. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you don't feel that your match is suitable for you, then no worries. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Locked On MLB. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners postgame show after a big 7-5 come from behind victory for the Mariners over the Houston Astros at T-Mobile Park tonight. Big, big, big win as we've talked about here over the first couple of segments of this show. Before we get out of here, let's talk about 110. I mentioned that the bullpen was, I mean, outside of the little hiccup there from Paul Seawald in the ninth, it's great tonight. Uh, and 110 was a big part of that, making his major league debut. And he goes one, two, three. So this was our first time getting eyes on 110. I don't know how much 110 you've been watching down in the minor leagues. <laughs> so, but what was your first impression of the major league version of Juan 10? Sure. First of all, shame on you for not saying he went one, two, three on 10 pitches, but it was right there. Man, it it's almost right one thirty. It's almost one thirty here. <laughs> just saying it was right there. 10 pitches. And, 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 le- and let's just say for, for some of our listeners who have been around for a while, uh, I'm feeling like game one wildcard tie right now. 
a lot of so. a lot of stuff going on in that brain of his. Uh oh, glitch. Yeah. Ooh. Are we good? Are we we're good? good. We're, still, still we're still alive. alive. We're still right. alive. But yeah, you glitched we're pretty hard there. Just like the Mariners with two outs in the bottom there of the eighth, go. baby. Right. That's right. Uh, so yeah, one ten. <laughs> uh, pretty interesting. There's a lot of deception. Uh, he kind of does this weird thing with his right shoulder. He kind of cocks it down and kind of whips the ball out. Uh, it's a really interesting delivery that will cause some some bad swings, um, you know, from from opposing hitters. But yeah, it's pretty much what I expected. It's 93 to 96 with the sinker and then a pretty decent slider. Uh, it's really going to be all about command with him. The stuff is is plenty good to be a middle reliever uh, at this stage of his career. He does have deception, which should also help the stuff play up a little bit. But can he stay out of the middle of the plate? The stuff is not good enough to live in the middle of the plate. He has to be on the corners um, and he has to be pretty sharp. He can't fall behind either. So looks like a middle guy to me, a middle reliever, um, which, you know, the Mariners just so happen to need right now. So works out pretty well. Uh, but he does look like a guy who can get big league hit- hitters out. I wouldn't really trust him in any high leverage spots right now. Um, and that's a few, you know, 10, 15 outings away. But uh, certainly against right-handed hitters in particular, he looks like he's going to cause some issues with the angle, with the deception, um, and with some pretty good stuff. Like it's, it's not great stuff. Right. It's not Matt Brash. It's not, um, you know, it's to me, it's, it's, it's different stuff, but it's kind of somewhat similar to Matt Festa and just like, it's not overwhelming, but if he's on the corners, he can get some strikeouts, he can get some ground balls and he can get some outs at the major league level. So overall it was a pretty good outing, I would say for, for one, one ten. So in order for 10 to be called up, the Mariners uh, placed Penn Murphy on the injured list, and uh, he was the guy that was getting the MRI uh, on uh, yeah. or back in Oakland that we were talking about on yesterday's show. And uh, I actually did. I, I was told that it was Penn yesterday, but I was told not to say anything about it. So yep. kept that on the down low. I, I know it's easy for me to say that at this point, but I, I did, and it's... Uh, it sucks, man, because uh, Penn's been having a really solid year, and um, you know. But I, I can't say that I'm all too surprised, considering how much they've used him, especially like early on in the season. That arm was getting a lot of innings put on it, um, and that that kind of evened out a little bit there over you know as we got deeper into the season. But uh, yeah, hoping for a speedy recovery from Penn Murphy because yeah. this bullpen is better with him in it. Yeah, I'd also like to say that. This is why carrying Chris Flexen really doesn't make any sense right now because you're mm. losing yourself an actual major league reliever by having him in the bullpen. A guy who you will never use in high leverage situations or even medium leverage situations. He's there just there to mop up. When you have when you're playing with one man down in the bullpen, everybody else has to pick up the slack in those high leverage spots, which means you're going to see more Penn Murphy, which means you're going to use, you know, Matt Brash and and uh, Paul Seawald and, and Spire and Topa and, and got, and they've all held up pretty well. The bullpen has done a phenomenal job in the first month and change here of the season, but you got to get him help. You have to DFA Chris flex and he's not valuable to you right now. Maybe they wait until Munoz comes back, which could be in a week to 10 days, give or take. Um, but obviously with that, with Diego Castillo struggles and with Matt, uh, Festa's struggles and, with Chris Flex and sitting in your bullpen for a good chunk of the season so far, that's a lot of pressure that you put on different guys to hold those middle innings and you're, you're using them a lot. So you are going to have to manage that a little bit better. And hopefully, like you said, hopefully Penn is, is okay. He's a really solid middle mm-hmm. guy. He's a guy that you trust in the sixth, seventh inning um, in a lot of different situations. So hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he gets back. Uh, but part of that overuse is because, you know, Castillo really struggled and Festa really struggled and, Flexing is just not a guy they trust to use in those leverage spots. So it's a little bit of a bummer, but I think they can rectify that pretty quick if they just, you know, swallow the money. So um, just piecing together the information that was floating around yesterday and then what I was told uh, yesterday when I learned that it was Penn Murphy, um, it seems like this is not something to be too concerned about because there was a chance that he wasn't going to land on the IL to begin with. Um, and that was why they had one ten on the taxi squad yesterday. They were just kind of waiting and seeing. Um, and m- hopefully, maybe this is just cope, but hopefully w- what ultimately led them to this decision is that, hey, he's going to be down for a few days anyway, and he hasn't pitched in a couple days. 
like we can re- retroact. I, I actually didn't see the official announcement. Was it retroactive to the last day that he pitched? I didn't. I didn't notice. Okay, so this has been floating around for the last day or so. And by the way, some people and one person in particular owes a big apology to Joe Doyle, who uh, broke this news yesterday. And because it was delayed by a day, uh, this particular person thought that Joe was making things up uh, and seemed to imply that. Joe does this a lot. And let me tell you guys something. When Joe Doyle says something's going to happen, you could take it to the bank. He's well connected yeah. in the game and much more connected than this buffoon. So, and by the way, somebody already asked him if he was going to apologize. He said no, because he was still wrong because it didn't happen yesterday. It happened today. So, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That person yeah, no. will show a big apology and uh, yeah. congrats to Joe for breaking the second bit of Mariners news in the last week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, congrats to Joe. Joe's killing it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm looking at the official announcement. Uh, it was retroactive to May 4th, but again, this is right. Well, actually, I, I don't think I even mentioned it, but it is right elbow inflammation. So, anytime uh, that's elbow, ne- shoulder, yeah. I just kind of assume the worst. So. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so maybe something has changed in their discoveries, uh, over the last 24 or so hours, but the last time I had heard anything, it was. We think he's going to be down for a few days and uh, at, at minimum, even if he doesn't get placed on the IL. So maybe, maybe again, yeah. maybe this is just cope, but maybe this is just a matter of, hey, we're not going to be using that roster spot anyway. Let's just get one ten up here, see what he's got. In the meantime, wall pin rests up. So Right. There's no reason to push him right now. Yeah. Your bullpen's yeah. in okay shape. Uh, so speaking about uh, injuries, uh, Colton Wong, uh, as I mentioned earlier on in the show, the reason that Jose Caballero was able to hit that go-ahead two-run double uh, in the bottom of the eighth is uh, because Wong um, suffered what looked to be a hand injury, a, a right uh, or a left hand injury. Um, they have uh, updated that, by the way. Okay, yeah. We did get was- word from Scott. Uh, Wong rolled his left wrist on the dive. Uh, they did x-rays. They came back negative for now. He's being listed as day to day. Obviously we won't see him tomorrow, uh, which means we'll see Caballero. I would imagine. Um, yay. So hopefully Colton is, is okay. And he can get back wrist injuries are always a little bit of an issue for hitters. Um, and this one in particular is a bit of a bummer because Colton Wong, as much as people wanted to pretend it wasn't happening, was really starting to turn things around. And he's been one of the Mariners' best hitters over the last seven to 10 days. So um, hopefully it's not too long here. You don't want him to lose the momentum. He was finding a lot of success eliminating the the lay kick. He was just toe tapping and uh, it was leading to, you know, more contact and and better swings. And uh, he was starting to turn things around. So hopefully again, this is just a short-term thing. Even if you don't love Colton Wong, you can't honestly sit here and say that you want Jose Caballero to be your everyday second baseman for the next 130 days uh, because, you know, Sam Haggerty exists and we saw how that went. Yeah, that's right. Still taking shots at Sam. That's wow. right. Wow. Wow. My range Sam, is just unlimited. Sam Haggerty catching strays on this overall positive episode of Locked On Mariners, yeah. but Colby just had to drag it down sure. just a little bit. Sure. By the way, the Colby well, curse, man, that's a, or Colby jinx. Col- Colby it's curse good. rolls off the tongue a lot better than Colby jinx. Alliteration's so. always nice. Yeah. So the Colby curse, you, you went on the Locked On Mariners Twitter account. And you were like, game over after what the seventh inning, sixth inning? Yeah, yeah, just the and seventh the inning before. Yeah, you were like, that's, on first that's and second, game. nobody. You were like, that's game. See you tomorrow. Yeah. And what what did the Mariners do immediately after that <laughs> yeah. tweet? Thankfully, it's impeccable. I, it's impeccable. It is, man. Thankfully, I logged back in. Uh, I believe. Um, let's see, when did I log back in? It was after he was uh, watching Ted Lasso. By the way, folks, yeah, and he calls finally. me the fake fan. He calls me yeah, the was, fake fan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, <laughs> there's never a bad time to watch Ted Lasso. I'm making that an official statement right now. That's Second true. of all, I point. was watching on my phone as I was watching Ted Lasso sure. on my laptop. Double screen uh, action. I, that's right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then I turned back and I tuned back into the game um, when uh, right after uh, was Jake Hitch just struck out mm-hmm. and then Gino walked. Right. I tuned yep. in. I tuned in right when uh, Cal was up. So, yeah. I was able to see most uh, of it, so that's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm a I'm a child who who believes that I might actually affect the game if I if I watch. Uh, <laughs> so I I was checking in on game day, 
here and there, you know, and I saw it was 3-1 JP, you know, the 3-1 count on JP, bases loaded, 3 nothing Astros. I was like, all right, I'm going to check in a couple minutes. I'm just going to see. And then sure enough, 3-3, three, three, and then I was able to catch the Caballero double and the uh, the two insurance runs after that. So, so Ty, I know we got to go because we got to get this thing up. You yeah. have to go to bed and sleep off some stuff. But I do want to ask you, I, I'm going to ask you a question that I'm pretty sure I know the answer to. Okay. okay. But I'm going to ask yeah. you anyways. Okay. Rank these three wins. Oh, no. Okay. Dylan Moore, Grand Slam, uh, for oh, Brooks yeah. Raley. Okay. Abraham Toro, Grand Slam, against Kendall Graveman. Oh, oh. Tonight's win. <laughs> Rank those three. All three massive come from behind victories or, or well, late <sighs> inning wins against the Astros. Which uh, was your favorite? I think I know. I feel like at this point your your brand is kind of tied yeah to no one of those. no yeah no no the, the, <laughs> so, the, yeah, well, the that's literally like the the embodiment of chills is the Abraham <laughs> Grand, <laughs> the Abraham Toro Grand Slam is the is the absolute embodiment of chills. So that's yeah. number one. Uh, sure. Honestly, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna put tonight's game last. The Dylan Moore Grand Slam. Okay. Just because of what happened the day after, <laughs> it makes it so much funnier <laughs> that they have that amazing comeback and then they trade their like second best reliever, best reliever at the time to the team yeah. right across the field and the absolute meltdown on Twitter. And then for it to be followed up by the Abraham Toro Grand Slam a month later off of Kendall Graveman. I mean, chills, chills. Yeah, I think I would rank them. I think I would go Dylan Moore because you guys know I love Dylan Moore. Demo one, super fan. Then, Demo super fan. Sure, right, right. Yeah, Demo stands rise up. Um, I'm gonna go Dylan Moore one, and then I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go tonight too because tonight was actually. I almost pulled the cord, victory. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> when I when I went back to laugh, I almost pulled the cord. Oh out. <laughs> boy. Okay. Well. All right, so I'm going. I'm going. Demo Grand Slam one. I'm going tonight to Toro three, just because the game was zero zero when Toro hit his Grand Slam. Yeah. But the level of irony will always make that one of my favorite home runs of all time. Like, oh, question. it's amazing. So, amazing. It's great stuff. So top ten us, Mariners moment of the last like five I don't, years. Okay, I, it's <laughs> it's okay, amazing. It's amazing. I would still. I I, I still yeah. watch that to this day. You know what? Honestly, sounds like a good off day episode. We're each going to rank our top five Mariners moments in the Jerry DePoto era. There wow. You go. Okay. There All you right. go. Mine are going to oh, be very unhinged. Mine are not only, going to be the popular choices. <laughs> o- only one moment per game, though. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So you can't have like Logan Gilbert dominating the A's and then like number one is Cal Raleigh walks off the A's. Let like us know yours if you're still watching or listening. Email us at lockedonmariners at gmail.com or leave a comment on this video tell us what your five favorite moments in the jerry depoto era are or against the astros five favorite moments against the astros or just let us know how you would rank those three games that colby mentioned just say something in the comments we want to talk to you and also there's going to be a lot of astros fans down below i can guarantee you that so we want to see you representing as well yeah we we want to see the sailors represented very well down below make it happen all right we are Plus, so I, we are so gonna get yelled at for the length of this episode we never we're a, never on time we're never on time hey i don't care baby the mariners just beat that's the astros right. that's right. i don't let's care go. let's go let's i don't go. care and B, <laughs> also it's guys, a bonus episode it's a bonus right. episode. And let also, it go if you guys just want to hang out in the comments there's going to be funny ones anyways so even if you don't want to comment, check them out because I guarantee you there's going to be some funny ones because Astros fans can't help but take the bait. It's so easy, guys. It's very so easy. easy. It's very right easy. here, rent free. It's very easy. It's very easy. All right. That's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners postgame show. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidy and Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. And hey, I forgot to mention this, but Tomorrow afternoon, you can catch the game on the Mariners Hometown Broadcast with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Yeah, I, I, I messed up. I messed up. I didn't mention it earlier on, but I needed to at least once. 
Uh, anyway, you can follow me on Twitter at Dane Gonzalez, C A N E G N Z L Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C P A T 11. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well over at Locked On Mariners. That's one word, Locked On Mariners. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen after the game. Have yourself a beautiful baseball evening, and we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>